slow to speak, so I won't get mad so quickly. And you will let it do what it's designed to do in you. Oh, by the way, that's how the Holy Spirit guides us. We have to have listened to his word for it to be in us. Holy Spirit, filled of the Holy Spirit without the word of God is impossible. The Holy Spirit brought this knowledge to man and we are to consume it, put it into our hearts. So listening, with, it's impossible for a child of God to grow spiritually, Brother Neil, and not listen to the word of God. Hear it and listening to different things. So let's move. Another verse, Proverbs 18 and verse 13. Proverbs 18 and verse 13. He who answers a matter before he hears it, it is folly and shame unto him. Proverbs 10 and 19. In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking. But he who restrains his lips is wise. Uh, the old folks say that you're, sometimes you need to bite your tongue. Bite my tongue. In other words, restrain, don't be so quick to say what's on your mind. And there are many more verses we could use. But I just want to put those few right there to give us a perspective that God's word has always been talking to us about uh, listening. But I told you, if you come back this evening, we're going to look at some things that will help us in improving and developing, uh, training ourselves to be better listening. Okay. First off, I want to make the statement, when you listen to someone or something, good listening starts with having an open mind. Now, that concept of open mind, I want to do some explaining. Be ready to hear so you can consider all that's being said about the issue. Now, this doesn't mean that we have to agree with what's being said. And that's where that disconnect comes in. I hear something and what's being said, uh, who's being said, I may not like and automatically I start to do the shutdown on it. Or I won't listen to it. Listening does mean that you agree. Listening doesn't mean you disagree. But listening means that you get all the facts so you can make a proper judgment about a matter. When you listen to someone, that don't mean you agree with them. That's why I, we miss out on so much information because of who is being brought, or who's bringing it forth. So listen with open mind. Be ready to hear and consider all sides of the issue. Doesn't mean that we have to agree with what's being said. We must avoid going into what is called the defensive mode. Something is said, I just on the defensive in a quick second. We need to think about how we responded to things. And to have a proper response, we need to hear the conclusion of the matter. Listen to the whole story. Try not to do that, jump into conclusions. And even if the information that you listen to is not correct information, it gives you what you need to correct a matter. Many times when we're listening to someone, uh, we, fall in, we fail in our responsibility as God's people to listen to them so that we can correct them. We usually find ourselves to turn into an argument because of what they taught me that is wrong. They ain't talking about the truth. They ain't saying it right. But the job of a Christian is to take the truth and share it to some, with someone. So listen and allow the whole matter to develop, get all sides of the story, then respond. Listen to the entire message without judging or refuting. That is hard. That's hard when it comes to who or where are we getting that information from. Now, there's some people we love to listen to. And there's some people we've already drawn a judgment on before they even open their mouth. Ain't hearing them. We all got good friends. We all got best friends. 
And use that one we consider a good friend, a best friend, that one we like to talk to. We'll listen to a good friend, that person all day long, have a long conversation. Let them, but now if it's somebody that I don't want to, always trying to tell me something, and that usually lines for us Christians, it's more of your teachers than even your preachers. We start shutting down altogether when we hear, especially if it's a subject that I don't like. There's a thing that happens. Uh, Y'all ever heard the term, a buzzword? A buzzword. Uh, but basically, any topic or subject that generates strong emotional reaction, either positive or negative, and we all got the Bring a certain subject up. <clears throat> Automatically, I'm shedding down. And in that moment of going through those emotions, it's a dozen things could be said that I did not listen to. Buzzwords, some triggers, subjects. Oh, we got them in the church. Got them in the congregation. Certain subjects can come up and everything comes alive. Teacher can't get control of the, com of the less classes. Everybody got something to say about the whole matter. Comments. The I feels. I don't see why. They're the conclusion of the matter of who we're supposed to be listening to. And when we're as God's children, who should we be listening to? God's word. Then draw a conclusion on what he said and why he said it to his children. Okay. So we all have what we call that buzzword. What we... Uh, what generates strong emotional reactions, either positive or negative. Uh, you judge and speak soon before you get the full aspect of what is about to be said. In other words, we're quick to jump to conclusions. But when it comes to listening to God's word, that's one of the most dangerous things that we can do, start to jump to a conclusion pertaining to what God is trying to get us to listen to. And it's a bad habit when you're listening to someone. Jump to conclusions. Well, they're wrong. They may be, but here the whole matter so you know how to continue, if you even need to continue in the conversation. Jump into conclusion. Uh, from a scriptural perspective, that's what the Jews did with Stephen. Stephen, the one who was stoned in the Bible. He said some things, he talked, walked them all down through the history about who they were. But when he said some certain things about it, it just set them off. Matter of fact, it said they gnashed their teeth and closed their ears and ran up on him and they killed the brother. How many times do we gnash our teeth and close our ears to what God's word is saying? And how many times have we killed or helped kill off somebody spiritually because of what we perceive in a situation? These things can happen, and we need to be better at discerning and listening. Listen to the entire message without judging or refuting. Uh, we need to determine what concepts are being put forth. Everybody speaks with something. They, they do it in their own different ways and things, too. But there is a construction of how somebody's trying to relay something to you. What are they trying to say? Not how they said, what are they trying to say? Listen to the whole matter to get the whole picture. We need to practice learning to uh, adapt to different ways that we hear things from different individuals. A speaker's appearance, a speaker's personality, uh, his delivery. You know how that affects how we listen to certain things? Most definitely so. Uh, we're not too apt to listen to somebody that comes up and they ain't dressed like we ought to see a preacher or a teacher dress. We don't like to listen to things, the facts that come from uh, uh, children, young children. Children can tell y'all some things. Tell us some things. I told y'all how the children in this congregation uh, have been taking some notes. I've, after I give my messages, I get some messages back. And what I, did I do it this time again? 
I think I left it in my office. I did. They put my sermon together totally what I had spoke of this morning. They even had the songs that were sung by name and who prayed. That takes listening. Now, I, I, I've been, I can't go back and tell you every song that was sung this morning and everything that I said. That is where their listening comes in at. It starts young. We all start out as good listeners. Thank you. Babies are good listeners. Babies learn by listening. How do you think they learn to talk? We send them to school. We tell them how to speak to them. They listen to what is being said and they start saying it. That's why you have to be careful what you say about our children too. They listen. They absorb it. They listen to things. That was one survey I did and it was with children in schools and it's the first graders who are better at discerning the things that they learn than, and, and it, it don't increase. You would think it increased as they get old and gray, but it decreases. Why? We stop listening to certain things and we start hearing a whole lot of stuff. We get distracted. And that's that next perspective, those things that distract us. Uh, let me give us some scriptures about uh, adapting to a speaker of who's delivering the information. Now we remember when God sent uh, Samuel to anoint himself another king. Because Saul was not listening to God. And he sent him to uh, the house of Jesse. And certain of, of David's brothers came out and Saul responded in a certain way. And Saul and Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 16 and 7, uh, he responded to one who came out, but God corrected him on some matter. Uh, 1 Samuel 16 and verse 7, it says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks, on, looks at the heart. Samuel was looking for the biggest and the strongest man at being the next king because we have that tendency to look at the out of appearance of a person. Same perspective was with John the Baptist. John the Baptist came proclaiming uh, him for the kingdoms at hand to God's people. And he wore a, a leather belt and a camel's hair robe, ate wild honey and locusts. That's kind of crazy acting, even to those in his day. But he was the forerunner of the Lord. He was the forerunner of the Christ. How many times do you think those Pharisees, those who dressed eloquent and spoke proper, made those elaborate prayers, came out and said, look at this crazy guy. But he was the messenger. Sometimes we find ourselves shutting down on listening to the message because of who it is being delivered. And beyond appearance, we must not, uh, we must understand that everyone is like us. We don't like to hear from people who are not like us. And sometimes we find that perspective coming in the most. They don't come and they don't look like us. They don't act like us. And we won't listen to them well. We must learn to overcome one of the main things. With it. It's called distractions. Mm. <laughs> distractions are everywhere. They happen. But we have to learn to overcome distractions. And anything can become a distraction. Uh, for some, it doesn't take very much to break concentration. Uh, as I said, we all start off when we're young as good listeners. Babies are good listeners. That's how they learn, grow from being baby to being little adult acting because they learn things. They listen. We don't teach babies how to talk. They listen to what's being said 
any one of us in whatever uh, environment you was raised in, if the, you rose in a household where they spoke French, you'd be speaking French. Speaking uh, Spanish, you'd speak Spanish. Korean, no, you speak what you would be listening to. So not only do we learn our vocabulary, we learn a whole lot of other things in our listening as we grow up. And many times those things develop into un, not too good characters, uh, traits, and they want to beat it out of the child. So where did that come from? Many times we need to be careful about what we are, who's listening to us, and what we are, information we are putting out. I guess somebody would run us off as children, Brother Neil, sitting around old for grown folks talking. <laughs> but back into the distractions. Distractions. We start finding distractions early on in our, in our lives. Um, give you some examples. If we ever hope to become better listeners, uh, greater in the, in, the, in the art, and it is an art of listening, you have to train ourselves to continue to be uh, uh, productive listeners. The practice of listening, first we have to come to terms and realize just what distracts me. Many times we don't take that honest perspective with ourselves that I have things that distract me. And sometimes you have to proactively go about removing the distraction of, from you or be conscious of the things that you're doing, the things you're allowing to happen, are distractions. And the distractions fall into these type of categories. External, those usually are noises and things. Some people just can't stand to have certain noises around. It, quick to distract them. You ever seen that? that what, what's that? Hear everything? Yeah. Every little thing? That you, can hear a pin drop? <laughs> External noises. Psychological activities. Oh, that sounds like a big word. But you know all that is? Something that we all be, 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 be getting distracted with? Psychological activities. Worries. Uh, self-consciousness, preoccupation. We let the world weigh in on us. That's what the scripture was taught. We let the world weigh in on us too much. We God you. Put all your cares upon the Lord. Take your burdens to the Lord. We read those verses. We hear those verses. But do we listen to what it's saying? We are so preoccupied. Everything that's happening in the world, we let it distract us to the point of we're not listening to God. Physical conditions. They all affect us in our, in, in, in keeping our focus, in, uh, temperature, odors, light, uh, visual distractions. That's why when we come together in a congregational setting, we try to keep those things at a minimum. We try to be strict and rude. We try to keep the worship and the teaching decently and in order and create an environment where those things cannot be a distraction. Physiological distractions, that's your pains, even hunger, fatigue. Lord's Day Sunday, I've been up all Saturday night. And I ain't talking about those who have to work late shifts, we know. I've worked graveyard shifts for many years, the second shifts and all. But that, you stay up all night watching TV till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Then you get up and you come to, to, to your worship service, your Bible class. You can't focus. You can't listen. You can barely keep your eyes open. Hunger. Start getting hungry, your stomach growling. Well, that's a distraction. That distracts, I distract myself sometimes. <laughs> yes, it started to act up. Hunger, uh, fatigue, being too tired. Too tired. I shared this class, so most of this also comes out of a, a lot of the, uh, the uh, counseling and, and where they train you to be counselors and everything, that perspective of the halt, uh, things that you never let yourself get to. Too hungry, 
too angry, too lonesome, too tired. Sounds like a simple thing, but those things we never give attention to. You have to take care of that physical self so that you can be focused. So you can not let those things be a complete distraction to your life. You're trying to listen to a sermon and you're thinking about that pot roast at the house. Boy, when I get some gravy and some, oh, you know, that big bowl of ice cream that's <laughs> oh, God. We get distracted sometimes when we're listening to someone that's using a different dialect, accents, unfamiliar vocabulary. I can be too well of a speaker. No, using a whole lot of big and fancy words doesn't help listeners. Unless you're talking to professors or teaching some, and even then. And sometimes we need to take more time to just uh, sometimes a person's accent or whatever, don't get so caught up in the way they're saying it, but listen to what they are saying and let that be the truth. That's why when you're listening to somebody, get the whole picture, let the whole story come from, so you can get certain what is truth and not true. Let's see if I can get a little bit more in this. Distractions happen with us when we take our focus off of what we claim that we are listening to. Only you can make a list of those things that you find to be your distraction. That's just a few that came out of the book. We all have things that distract us, that are more easily distracted at this than as another. And do things to correct it. Now, I'm coming home with this one. Many times in our settings of Bible classes and worship service, uh, there are distractions that are happening and they happen all the time. And we have the power to do something about it. Sometimes where you sit can be a distraction. Amen. And you can do something about that. Amen. You can move. To a, you can move. You can move to area that does distract in you. You can do things in perspective of uh, sometimes you can't hear what's all being said. You can change your location. Sometimes you're just not uh, the person, the uh, way they talk, their dialect, their accent is, uh, is what's throwing you off. Uh, it's nothing wrong with asking someone. It's, now, I'm not talking about in worship service. It's a different perspective here. You guys can't ask me too much. But in the Bible setting class or any type of where you're trying to just get an understanding of listening, to, ask questions, but ask questions that lead to getting the information over. We do more questioning of what's being spoken or taught outside of the setting where it's being taught. Have a whole lot to say when we hit parking lots and, and on text. Many times we're discerning the whole aspect of the, uh, of the sermon or a Bible lesson with someone else on the phones instead of engaging in the activity of listening to the whole perspective and getting the and sharing the knowledge back or asking questions that will lead to uh, getting a clearer understanding. So when we learn to not let ourselves be distracted, it helps us become better listeners. As I stated earlier, listening does not mean you agree. Listening is the art of gaining and disseminating information. Sometimes we think if we continue to listen to someone with whom we disagree, that we will give the impression that we agree with them. That's not the truth. You listen to what someone has to say. Get the whole story. That's one of the skills, as I think they try to teach when they teach you how to do and conduct a Bible class or develop interest in somebody with, uh, that you're trying to gain an interest in teaching them about God's word. Listen to them. Matter of fact, listen to someone even if they don't have the correct information. Clearly tells you what you need to know. The very question that you want to ask will be answered many times and just let them talk and listen clearly to what's being said. And if the opportunity presents itself, give back to them what they said to you. That's how the understanding perspective come 
back and forth. This is what you said. Not go into that mode of, of, of arguing or, or disputing about it. That becomes the proper way to do that. Don't mean that you agree. Listening demands neither surrendering nor agreeing. Instead, listening demands an open mind, and listening actually provides a powerful way to bring about change. Changes in yourself, or even changes in someone that you're listening to. Because listening is thinking. You have to think to listen. You don't have to do much thinking to hear. But when you listen, you are putting forth your mental capacity to discern, to acknowledge. You've got to use all of your thinking in the process of listening. Listening is thinking, and listening is action. Just because a person sits quietly and listens, they're being more actively involved in something than somebody that's every two words they got something to say. Every two words they, yeah, 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 but. Have you ever talked to somebody like that? You're trying to talk to them and you, they ask you a question. You try to give them an answer before you can even finish it. The, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. But another question or they answer a question before they, they got a dozen questions and won't you take time to get an answer to any of them? Listening. Our, our Lord gave us a, some great examples of how he used listening. Biblical accounts. When the Lord was teaching in the temple, and, and this took me some time to just get the concept when you listen to it, Jesus was in the temple teaching. Those Pharisees that came in with the woman that they had caught in the act of adultery was the same perspective of somebody coming into a Bible class or wish, and just interrupting the whole thing with a whole other issue that didn't matter to apply to that altogether. And that's what happened. They was in the temple he was teaching. They brought the woman in and said she was caught in the very act of adultery. And here she is. And the law of Moses said that we need to stone, you have to stone her. How did he respond to that? He got into a big argument with those Pharisees. He listened to what they had to say. And he just continued, kneeled down. And they were doing a whole bunch of talking. He was doing some writing in the sand. He never responded to them in that perspective. They had a whole lot to say. Uh, matter of fact, let's just visit some of that. I just want to give us some. Uh, John chapter 8. Listen to how our Lord, the master teacher, the one who's always said we need to be hearers. He who have ears to hear, let him hear. John chapter 8, starting with verse 3, says, Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, teacher. This woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. They talking and causing a whole, but he did not even engage them in conversation as if he didn't hear so when they continued asking him he raised himself up and said to them he heard the conclusion of all what they had brought what they said they had done how their situation had come he listened to them then he spoke and his question was his uh, statement was he who is without sin among you let him throw a stone at her first And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, they listened to that part. Nobody else had anything to say after that. 
went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. He listened to him. Didn't get into an argument with him about the law, which he gave to Moses. He listened. Let them state their case. Then he stated the rest of the matter. Because if they was going to use what Moses had said, it was, he wouldn't tell them anything different. The rest of that goes, if you go and check, the one who is, who, the accusers are the ones who throw the stones at the one that you're accusing. Why are you bringing her to me? Now ye who without sin, you cast the first stone. Because they realized that in that situation, they fell into sin. Because you cannot bring a case like that to be judged upon with one, one in a two-party situation. Don't work like that. They turned and they walked. Getting all the facts of what somebody's going to present you don't mean that you agree, don't mean they right or wrong, but get all the facts and then you can make the proper judgment. They brought no man, and if they said they caught her in the very act, that means you saw it. So where's all of everything? So he let them talk, and they by their, we indict ourselves, and sometimes we try to justify ourselves. But when it comes to the matter of God, God's word stands as the truth. So that's when you listen to a whole case and just lay it out the way God wants it to be handled. With myself first and then present it to others. Accepted or rejected, it stands to that point. So then as Jesus had listened, wrote, when Jesus raised himself up and saw that none but the woman was there, he says to her, woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one, has, has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus says to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. He didn't condone her sins. He was letting it clear that I was not the one to make the condemnment on you. But you, if this is a matter of fact, it's something you need to correct. Go and fix it. Stop. Stop sinning. That's what God's word does. So when we listen to the good information, when we listen to God's information, it becomes a matter, not a cause argument, not to cause dispute, but a matter of us getting all the information. If I am a good, true listener so that I can make proper judgment on what is being said and done pertaining to me and about others. Jesus knew what the men were up to because we know he could read the hearts. We can't read other folks' hearts. But God reads our hearts and he can show us our hearts. And that's where listening falls in the, be ye listeners, be ye hearers of the words and not doers of We need to hear and do. Listening helps me. I have to train myself to become a good listener. And if we all practice being better at listening, then we can be better servants of our God. Stop trying to jump in on a talk. That's something that's good. It's still in the conversation. Take it over. Out talk. Ah. That's a challenge sometimes. That's the challenge. Sometimes we, 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 we got something to say and we can't restrain ourselves from saying it. This is a challenge that we all face sometimes, especially when we come together sometimes as groups or even when you're talking to someone one-on-one -on -one to hijack the conversation. Um, now I know that we do have those in family and friends that are just conversation hogs. In other words, they're going to eat up the conversation, they're going to take it all, but Again, when we try to practice these uh, listening skills, even if you engage with someone like that, sometimes you just need to just restrain yourself and let them talk. Listen to them. Let them talk. 
Don't let them drag you into a challenge of out talking or trying to, to it, what it does for you, it helps to improve your patience and your listening skills. So if you got that, that talkaholic, let them talk. You learn, you use as a time for, use it for your training. And also, not just let them talk, but listen. Because many times people are giving forth information, but we don't like for it to be just poured out too much. We want it in small batches, but learn to be a better discerner of what someone has to say. Uh, it improves our listening skills when we pay close attention to what is being said. And sometimes it'll prepare you better at helping them because when you get that moment, sometimes you'll be better equipped at showing them what they're doing instead of just clashing head to head about the whole matter. Every situation of hearing things can become a situation for us to learn and be better at if we just listen to what's being said, how it's being said, and who. Of course, those are some times when you do just have to interrupt some, some things. I mean, if there's a time frame on something, like Brother Scott is on right now, somebody have to give me a sign sometimes and say, you know, you got to. <laughs> so we have to pay attention, you all. That's all I'm saying when it comes to listening. Listening is paying attention. Paying attention to both the verbal and the nonverbal messages. We even train our young men to listen to what's being said. And sometimes you have to help individuals in the conversation. Uh, we can get caught in a loop, repeating the same thing over and over. Listen to what's being said. Sometimes you have to skillfully intervene to help that person uh, 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 come back into a right order. So paying attention. Paying attention to body language. Someone gets fidgety about some things or whatever. They're telling you something. Listening goes further than just that word. We've listened. I told you all this morning how I had made that statement about have to put my glasses on so I can hear. That perspective is true. We listen with our eyes and our ears. But we do more. We hear more with the ears, but we listen more with what we see. Sin will tell you a whole lot of things that uh, you don't when you just listen. That's why person-to-person -person conversation is what God wants us to be as his people. He wants us to be together. We have to be together and listen to his word and listen together. Uh, you cannot get the same context of listening to a person in person that you do when you're talking on a phone or in a text. It just doesn't have that personal perspective of what you're actually hearing. And I will bring this into a conclusion. There's nothing wrong with asking questions to clarify a message. But in order to ask the proper questions, I must have listened to what was uh, being said. Always try to find some point of interest in what is being said. You pick out the points of interest. Listening and in that what you're hearing, find something that you may want to, if it doesn't interest you, it may be something in what's being said that may be an interest, a service for someone else. Listening. Always practice how to listen. Doesn't mean you agree. Uh, Jesus used this several times in his uh, teaching. He would listen. There are a few things that I think I could go into, but time will not allow it. We know it's not always possible to give all perspectives of the Bible in pertaining to what God wants us to know. But as we learn to hear his word, really hear it in listening, and seek to have a better understanding of it ourselves, it makes it easy for us to listen to someone even when they're not as knowledgeable as we are. Matter of fact, when you listen to God's word, it helps you to see a person not in the light of they, uh, you know, they, 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 what they ought to be, it makes you see where, where they are, 
so that you can help them become what God wants you to be in, help, in bringing that person into a better understanding. Our listening is, plays such a big part in our whole life, especially the life of a Christian, that if we become better at the skill of being good listeners, we'll be better in our service to our God. I'm going to bring this to its close. We're going to close with um, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 55. Because I know that all of us want to be better listeners, especially when it comes to the word of God. Isaiah 55 and verse number 2. I'll start there and the lesson will be yours. 55 and 2 of Isaiah. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me here and your soul shall live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David. Listening has always been the perspective that God wants his people to be about in carrying out his word and his will. Hearing the word of God, to believe it, one must listen to it. To act up on it, one must be listening to what he is saying that he's required of us. Uh, one believe. Repentance, change of mind. You heard something, but not just heard, you had to listen. Change of mind that leads to change of action comes clearly with what one has listened to, to the point of seeking to move forward on it. To even declaring that Jesus is Christ, the Son of the living God, we need to hear what we're saying often not just the one time when one comes forward and being baptized that is something that we must keep hearing in our lives all the time jesus is lord and if he is my lord he has the right to give me the instructions so when we even start our walk with christ hearing his word believing it repenting confessing that jesus christ the son of the living god and being baptized puts us back into the very state of now listening to what he wants us to do. They continued in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in prayer. That whole concept of coming together and hearing what God has to say among ourselves puts us and keeps us where God wants us to be. Good listeners to what God's word is. If you have heard, if you have listened to this message this evening, I hope it didn't bore you, but I hope it did bring you to that aspect of let us all become better at what we seek to be, God's people and listening to what truly he's saying to us in it. If you're not in the body, if you heard this message, I hope you listen to it. And it pricks one in the heart to come forth and give their life to Christ through baptism and becoming part of the body. And for those who are in the body, if you walk contrary, listen to what God's word tells us, that we may correct ourselves in our spiritual walk. If any of these things are your desires upon this evening, then let us stand, some director is back before us. Let us all contemplate these matters in our hearts and life. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that Thou bidst me come to Thee, the whole of God, I come, I come. Um. Let us uh, have another amen for the uh, message amen. this evening. Thank you.
Um, we've arrived at the point where we'd like to make each other's prayer requests known. So um, if I do read your name, if you're able, if you could stand so we could place a face in the name, we greatly appreciate that. And with that, uh, my first request would be from Sister Cynthia Scott. And she is requesting traveling grace for Brother Elder and Brother and Sister Gay, as well as their families returning back home. She wants to thank us and uh, tell us God bless you. That's Sister Cynthia Scott. And uh, my next request is from Brother Jose Gonzalez. He is requesting prayers for a court appointment on the 20th. He asks that uh, we pray for him through that and that God, um, if it is God's will, that it go well with him. That's Brother Jose. Uh, these last couple are from online. One from Adele Garrett asking us to please keep himself and his wife Sabrina in prayer. That's uh, Daryl Garrett online. Then the last request I have is from Sister D. Ingram, uh, requesting the church to please pray for Sister Vivian Pittman's sister, Bernice, who is currently in the hospital. That's Sister D. Ingram. Uh, with those requests in mind, let us go to our God in prayer. <clears throat> 